O'Sullivan. And here is Wu, uh, sorry, here is uh, Lu Haishan. Big opportunity for him today. He uh, had a good win yesterday over Zhang Ander, who of course beat O'Sullivan on his way to the final of the English Open last week. Comes O'Sullivan then, as ever, getting uh, good appreciation from the audience. Yeah, he's uh, been really pressed, I guess, just once this week by Pang Jongju. That went to a decider. In fact, he had three frames. Otherwise, in his other three matches, he's only lost a combined three frames. Beat Yuan Sijun yesterday. So let's see if Lu Hai Shan can stand up to this, take the game to O'Sullivan, try and get him under pressure early on. If not, surely it will be the Rockets' day. Lu Haishan, the world number 46 from China, getting this quarter final underway. It's best of nine, first of five. Ronnie O'Sullivan appearing in his 138th ranking event quarter final, looking to reach his 89th semi final. So he's got all the experience in the world, but uh, he's still got a job to do here. Five frames needed to reach the semi finals to play the Mark Allen or Annie Carter. Fergal O'Brien is going to enjoy it with me, as we'll just let Ronnie play this shot before we introduce Fergal. I always feel, Fergal, from Lou Hyshan's perspective, it's like he's coming onto Ronnie's terrain, his table, he's played in it all week. It's sort of sink or swim time. Thank you, David. Yeah, um, that can make a difference. Um, obviously, he's been playing generally on the outside tables. Again, Ronnie, not just been playing on the same table, obviously used to how it's playing, but also playing the same time each evening, much easier, particularly in China, to get into a rhythm and a pattern, sleeping over there can be affected. Again, such as Ronnie's appeal, even though we're playing in China, you still feel Ronnie be the favourite. I guess from his perspective, that puts him under a little bit of pressure and he's, he's expected to deliver. If he wins this match, it doesn't really register, does it? But if he loses, it's considered a big upset. So it's from his perspective, he still, as I say, got a job to do. He's not actually been in a semi-final, which is the stage he's trying to get to in a ranking event, since he won his seventh world title, and that was 17 months ago. Didn't reach one last season. Yeah, it's hard to believe. Again, played fantastic winning Shanghai Masters. It's always a sense of anticipation when Ronnie is involved. I suppose even at my age, you feel you can still learn something watching him from how he goes about playing. I played Lou five times. First time was back in 2012. He was only 14, a wild card. He's definitely improved over the years. Very good in all departments. If you're being critical, you might say that he's not brilliant in any particular one. We can end still very young, that can improve. And today you feel if he is going to win, he's going to have to score very heavy. Well, it's his second quarter final of the season. He got to this stage of the European Masters, did Lou Haishan. So it's been a pretty good campaign so far. He's uh, this week already beaten Chris Wakelin, Ben Mertens, and as I mentioned earlier, Zhang Ander. And the match is pretty routine in terms of scoreline. They were all with the greatest respect on outside tables. This is, as I say, into the lion's den. It's the main table, all eyes on it, being broadcast right around the world. And even though we're in China, O'Sullivan is going to have the majority of the support, you suspect, from the crowd. It's amazing how the outside tables and even the other table that we see in the arena now, even though it's so close, two tables close together, how different they can play. It'll take a little bit of adjustment. A perfect adjustment of being under pressure playing Ronnie. He played and I shot to nothing.
that kind of shot, shot to nothing, gets a high percentage of, probably lacks some Q power the way other players have. Yeah, from when he potted the blue, to slightly ran out of position, kind of the wrong side of the balls. 18. I think it's a red here, go to the left corner, be able to go back up the table. Yeah, it wasn't the most assured visit, but, you know, there will be nerves early on in this match for sure. Fair to say how Sullivan is used to <laughs> this table. He did actually play his first match on table two, but we, most of it he's been camped out here, understandably, on table one. It's the reason Novak Djokovic is always going to play on centre court, is what they've achieved. They've earned the right to be there. Right. Despite that, though, that cue ball has just carried on running there. Once there, Ronnie didn't quite get through the ball. Not only did he miss the pot, of course, lost the white as well. And regardless of many matches you've played, even on the same table, always at the start of the match, you don't always settle straight away. Can't take a few shots, not just to get used to the pace of the table, just to settle yourself. Lou's not going to get too many chances today. So when he gets them, he's going to have to maximise. Score heavy. Get frames on the board. And of course then try and put Ronnie under some pressure. Eight. Well, this is the red I mentioned earlier, the one on the black spot, which has obviously stopped the black going on there. That would open things up if you get the black back into play. Similar to one he had just a couple of minutes ago, which he caught a bit too thick. And just at this time. Nine. Good pot and perfect on the blue. Quietly goes about his business. Kind of player you can underestimate. but very competent and good temperament. With the sort of the middle ranking band, isn't he? Sort of 32 to 64. They are all really good players. He's making the numbers up there. They're all capable. We saw Zhang Ander, 57 in the world last week, come through, reach a final. So no, Sullivan certainly won't take him lightly. He knows that players around that position can certainly more than compete. I think he's slightly taken by surprise there. I think he'd have more of this red to try and be able to pot it. Looking at that angle, might be able to slightly turn it over to trace a right-hand side, but 
I think he fully expected to be able to just bend down and pot this red easily. Yeah, I'm playing it with that slow trace of side to ensure the pot. Wasn't able to play with any pace to really get away from the pink. So that's a slight misjudgment. And has to take his medicine here, just went down the table to see where's the ideal position to leave the white. 43 ahead. Ideally, if you can play a good safety. Still in control. It's easy to fall into the trap when you're playing, Ronnie. I'm thinking you have to win frame in one visit. Well, he's right down the line of it. I think he feels he can pot this. 43 in front. If he can pot the red get on a colour, then he's a big favourite to win the opening frame. But he hasn't potted it. Plays that type of safety shot, the figure of eight, swing round the table a lot, Ronnie. Never plays a safety shot without side. Always looking to try and manipulate the white, put in the most difficult position for his opponent. Just got the very thin edge of it. Barely moved the red. Hang on. Wow. <laughs> well, outrageous luck. A nice little kiss as well there. Easy to pot now and get back down the table. It's tough enough playing Ronnie without him starting to get a run of the balls as well. And certainly that brown coming down onto the black spot, definitely to his advantage. Yes, the brown is sort of moonlighting as the black at the moment because the black's on its spot, obviously. And that means he won't be going up in okay. as high as increments, but as long as he keeps potting. And this is a good chance now, having been on the back foot a little bit in this frame, the fluke may have turned things. And there has been certain players that have played over the years that have been colourblind. If they're going to come into trouble, it's usually with the trying to differentiate between the brown and the reds. You are actually allowed, as the referee, confirm that it is the brown. Yeah, I mean, great players. Mark Williams, Peter Ebden will be two world champions who have that issue.
It's good though, isn't it? Snooker's not sort of given into the modern age by, you know, changing the colours and let's have a snazzier colour than the brown. No thanks. <laughs> we're, happy, we're happy as it is. <laughs> Double points for certain pockets. <laughs> well, of course, uh, Joe Davis introduced it, Snooker Plus, didn't he, in, in, the, in the 50s? There, Purple two, and orange. Yeah, it? two extra balls, which were worth more, but uh, again, it didn't really catch on. Anyway, O'Sullivan, with that fluke, has got himself in, and you've got to think if you're Lou Hirsch and you'll be fearing the worst. Yeah, I'd be disappointed if he does end up losing this frame. Not only did he have a couple of chances then got compounded. Ronnie Fluke in that red. There's still plenty of frames to play. But there's no guarantee in each frame you're going to get a chance against Ronnie. So these type of frames, scrappy frames, or when you have chances, you feel you have to take a very high percentage of because you know there's going to be spells where Ronnie Cano play you. Yes, and OK, he was lucky how he got in, but you can't fluke a ball if your opponent hasn't broken down, which Lou Harshen did. He had a couple of good chances. He had the chance at the long red as well to right corner. I don't think players ever see it that way, do they? But the fact is, <laughs> if he was still at the table, Ronnie O'Sullivan can't fluke one. Yeah, I suppose he's ran the risk that bad luck could happen. If you're not at the table, you're not in control. Well, this is the shot now, isn't it? Because he's got to travel for Brown. So if it's going to go wrong, I guess this would be the moment. Pacey this, to say the least. Well, it has gone wrong in a big way. Yeah, massive misjudgment there. Let off certainly there for Lou. Caught that little bit thinner than he would have liked. And as a result, he's left the possibility of a shot to on the brown. Again, in plain, it looks like the angle could bring close to the pink. Side against him, played an excellent safety. where the brown finished just as well he did get the snooker now in off oh wow what a chance now for Lou Heishen could not ask for a better one so what a dramatic first frame he must have thought after the fluke and O'Sullivan looked like he was mopping up he'd lost it it's in his hands now These scores aren't right, are they? On the screen. Yeah. <laughs> the, the scores aren't right, but he's won the frame. And he's won it pretty dramatically. He obviously didn't need the black, otherwise he would have played on it. So apologies for that. It was just a graphic error, but not an error from Lou. 
So Lou Hyshin has won a dramatic opening frame as Sullivan flute to red. He was setting about a clearance and then the shot he played, Brown was on the black spot. Green to yellow pocket, completely misjudged it. He actually would have been better on it had the Brown still been on its spot. He was miles away from it. Lou Hyshin laid a good snooker and O'Sullivan went in off from it and the Brown was unmissable. The clearance, he just needed Brown, blue and pink. You always fancied he would make and he did. So 1-0 to him. Yeah, ended up over hitting, hitting it by about six foot. Very, very uncharacteristic. But a let off for Lou. That certainly helped him settle down. Just getting that frame on the board. On table two, Ali Carter leads Mark Allen 1 0. We know the uh, first semi final tomorrow morning, UK time, will be Judd Trump against Wu Yizza. Well, he desperately needed cover there. That's uh, caught it thin and has left an immediate opening. just playing that with bottom just to try and drag try and keep as low as possible on the black to ideally go into them eight nine another opportunity there made sure you try to get low on the black ideal angle now to go into the black and stun into the pack But the Reds have not played ball. Daniel Sullivan, sixteen. Would have liked the white a little bit closer to the cushion. I was obviously concerned with leaving the right, the red that's close to the right hand corner. Who my feel he has to go for this red. Closest to the blue. That's he's just having a look there. That can he maybe stun it over and try and leave his white in somewhat of a safe position? I don't think he can. I think he has to just fully commit to the pot. As I said, he, he was looking for a place to try and get cover. The result of that didn't totally commit to the pot. Probably quite fortunate they didn't go enough. Peggy Lee just. Uh well, asking people to make sure the phones are on silent. There was a little sort of message alert there. I'm not saying that's why I missed it, but she's just trying to stop that happening again. Best of luck with that, Peggy. <laughs> Peggy. Well, he's potted the red, but it's black. Also, it's not straightforward. What he's seen, though, so far is that Sullivan hasn't quite come out sort of all guns blazing, which is, if he does, you kind of are in trouble. It's not happened yet. Yeah, nicely done.
has been as high as 26 in the world. That was off the back of getting to the Indian Open final, ranking event final four years ago, 2019. Matt Selt beat him. He played at the Crucible a few times. He's won a match there, actually. So, you know, he's come good here and there. But to, be, to really rise the rankings, of course, you have to try and be more consistent. Eight. It was up off the shot very quick there. And left right here for Ronnie. One. Struck her very well. Previous long red, you could see Ronnie brought the cue right back to his thumb. Let the cue do the work. Didn't have to force or generate any power. Struck it beautifully, gave it every chance to go in. Nine. Generally never hits the white any harder than he has to or, or need to. Seems to strike it at optimum pace and power. It looks like he's overrun it. 23 is that red. Past the pink, go into the middle. Wow, well, he couldn't get into the red, so he's played the double, but it's backfired massively. The red has not gone in. It's come back into the pack and has left an immediate chance for Lou Hyacin. Yeah, that's actually been a few times during this match already that Ronnie has been straight or just off straight on the black. And just makes it so much more difficult when you don't have the angle on the black. Again, that's a feature of his game. In around the black, his cue ball is usually immaculate. Just having to look to see what's the exact contact he needs on the red or reds. Very easy to get stuck stuck on a red. He was fearful of that and in the end decided to avoid them. Eight. So he'd be guaranteed to be on another red. Nine. 
uh, again, it's a chance that has come along maybe a little unexpectedly for Lu Haishan. Still, of course, there's that safe red on the right-hand side cushion, which uh, will come into play at some point. It plays in a very quiet, understated manner. Even a lot of shots he plays are hit very gently, tends to roll a lot of balls. Relies on good position of play. And he's probably aware that Ronnie hasn't come out playing his brilliant best yet. That may well happen. So until that does, if it does, he's got to take advantage as best he can. Well, it's obviously, it doesn't have to do with this visit. If he could get 2 0 up, that's a great start from. It sort of looked wide. You just wondered if the pocket would still take it, but it didn't. Sullivan's going to have the same issue with the safe red. That's the key ball now on this table. Again, quite straight on the black. Not a lot he can do with it. You've no ambition there to try and take the red out. Just trying to get the white as close as possible. Makes it easier to play a safety shot here. Sullivan, Opportunity here for Lute just to play a safety, bring the white back down, but also put the red onto the blue, get the blue out and away. And you're guaranteed keeping the red safe as well. 18 behind Lute, so would need that pink that's on the side cushion. Well, trying for a thin edge now, then is this a free ball? No.
Back we go. Playing it that way, obviously fearful of he gets a little bit thicker. He can easily clip the red over close to the right corner. Just a slight adjustment and played it brilliantly. And look at this for a result. Great bonus to be in behind the blue, but he played it well. Well, this is his uh, potential chance for Lou Ayesha and if he's going to take the red on. No, he's had a look. Didn't like what he saw. The surprise didn't that surprise that Lou didn't go for the red there. He had a bit of an angle. He literally just had to play it a pocket weight. You're guaranteed to be on the black. And he always felt that Ronnie kept playing it. He wasn't going to get a nicer chance. That's what I always think, Fergal, in that situation. If Sullivan had missed a pot and that was the shot that he'd left Lou Heishen, he would have taken the pot on, wouldn't he? Yeah, or if, or if he'd have played the black to land there, he mm. would have. But sometimes you can get a little bit passive, nearly hoping that maybe you might get an, uh, another better opportunity or maybe a few more points, but it always look, looked likely that he wouldn't get a better opportunity than that. Well, he's got seven points out of that shot, so things not quite going to plan for Ronnie O'Sullivan. And that makes a difference, doesn't it, with that pink now? Just 11 points in it. Yeah, it's a fine line for Lou today, having that balance between patience and also being too passive. Yeah, I think at the moment he would still need the pink, but obviously if O'Sullivan hit the black again, then that would be a different story. Ronnie definitely seems to be more patient and tolerant with the referees so far this season. It's early days yet. We've seen the last few years. He's either got either got temperamental or just went to his chair and just let them get on with it. Well, this is the second event of the season in China and he's not put a foot wrong in either of them in terms of his behaviour. So he's making good on what he was saying about coming to this part of the world. Very confident pot that, but as I say, this pink is going to play its part in this frame. There's a couple of options here, obviously a little bit close to the side cushion. Also looking at the blue, the possibility of potting it. And then if he, if he did miss it, you might even get cover the yellow. 
It's time though to try and positive. Pick a colour, play position, try and get perfect on the yellow. Play that very well. Careful of this waistcoat. Peggy Lee's on the spot. She uh, she will be. It's pink. Five. Yeah, a few shots ahead. If he had the white similar position playing the blue, he would be able to pot the blue and come over to the side cushion to the pink. Again, as a right hander, the pink's on the better side for him and a little bit away from the cushion. So if he could somehow get behind the pink, you'd really expect him to pot it if he could roll it in dead weight. Again, crucial hit from the brown to leave that nice angle on the blue. And even if he didn't get ideally on the pink, he's got the first opportunity then to play Italian safety. Really looking to put it somewhere between the middle pocket and the pink. Let's just check in there. Seventeen. Well, he couldn't have played it much better, could he? So he's given himself every chance. Just needs the pink to take a 2-0 lead. He won the first frame on the pink. Can he knock this in? Big shot this for Lu Hai Shan. In it goes. So O'Sullivan not quite at the races, and Lu Hai Shan is standing up to this. He's potting the crunch balls in this match. He leads the quarter final. So it's 2 0 to Lu Hai Shan. Maybe not going to what a lot of people thought it would early on. Two close frames. He won them both on the pink. Sullivan yet to get in and establish himself with break building or anything really. So Lou Ayrshire sitting pretty at the moment. It's also 2 0 to Ali Carter against Mark Allen in the other match. It's just a bit of um, an issue with the audience. I think there was a bit of a mix up about who was sitting where. But anyway, Peggy Lee has uh, got the security to sort it out. And here we go, frame three. Just on the table, by the way, obviously we're down to one table tomorrow. It will be recovered uh, tonight before the semi-finals. Very frustrating that when you've worked hard to win a frame and from the break off you've given your opponent an opportunity. Obviously it was a very good pop from Ronnie but you always feel from the break off your opponent shouldn't have a red to go at. He's so proficient in these kind of areas, Ronnie. You wouldn't be at all surprised if from that one half a chance that is the frame. Seventy. One good split here. Could well decide the frame. I think you'd class that a good split. I would say so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it just shows you how quickly he can just step in. I mean, the first red was a beautiful pot, wasn't it? And things can go wrong, anything's missable, lose, lose position, etc. But it looks for all the world like this is his frame now, from what we've seen over the last 30 years. And again, good attitude. You know, he's lost two frames, he could have won. And there have been times over his career where he'd be a bit on his own case, but that's not happened here. 
just getting on with the next frame. Unfortunately, though, playing running, it's a cardinal sin to be leaving the red from the break off. I'm not sure the exact statistic or if you can find out, but still in the pro game, an awful lot of frames are lost just from the break off alone. Seems to be a general level of acceptance among players. Uh, what could I do? He could pop one for my break, but he just can't afford to. Modern game, everybody's looking to improve, working with coaches, working on technique, getting fitter. Yeah, I think you could start with an ideal scenario if your opponent never put a red from your, your break off. 47. I think you'd obviously win a lot more frames. Of course, Mark Williams has seen a few years ago, took it to its nth degree. Just gone slightly wrong, this. Still potential for this red. He's very close to it, to the far corner. Yeah, and he's missed. So that good chance, and it was a great chance when he got the split, has not won him the frame. I, just, I did say anything could go wrong. We didn't expect it to, I don't think, but it did. Yeah, it. Very unusual there for running not to capitalise. More or less from point blank range and then lose position of the white. One. And having had the chance, Ronnie, and missed, puts even greater importance and emphasis on this opportunity for Lou. So that by, by far his worst shot of the match. Six. Massive margin for error there to be on a choice of reds. Yeah, and just in the moment, might have been aware of the significance of this opportunity. Get a little bit excited, a little bit ahead of yourself. Mightn't have expected to be 2 0 up on Ronnie. But a good re recovery pot. It's interesting, isn't it? You would think, obviously, if O'Sullivan's playing his best, it, it's sort of mission impossible almost. But if he's playing not well, that puts you under pressure as well because you sense a chance to beat him. And this frame, I'm sure from Lou Hyshen's chair, looked over, suddenly, no. He's thinking, hang on, if I could clear up here, what a blow to land. Anyway, he's got the red in, so let's see if he can continue to get back into the frame. It's a bit of an adventure, but he's still on a red. Picking these off nicely, obviously looking to pot the next couple of reds and get to the reds on the left hand side cushion. <coughs> I 
even if he didn't get on the red nicely to pot it, be able to play a telling safety behind it. So, 34. great opportunity not to win the frame here, it's certainly to certainly take control of it. 35. Again, Ronnie has looked quite calm, but certainly to be 3 0 down to lose a frame when he's such a good opportunity, you would think would bring some level of frustration. Yeah, and of course, I mean, you look go back to the Welsh Open. He was in the quarterfinals there as Sullivan. He lost 5 0. No one really sees them coming, but they can happen. He did have tip trouble in that tournament, but even so, it was a shock. And Ding actually beat him 6 0 in the quarters of the UK Championship last season as well. Yeah, it looks to have a nice angle here, maybe natural. Just to go, basically go in between the red and the pink. Might need to trace a right hand side just to get closer to the red. Yeah, it did. And you can see that right hand side when it came off the cushion. Without the side, he would have hit the pink. Now guaranteed to be on the red. Played it lovely. Has a natural angle. Just drop it in, pocket weight if he wants. And that's what he's just checking. If he drops it in, pocket weight, can he leave himself parallel or low on the black? And he's worked hard for these, but all of a sudden now comes a very good chance. One good pot here from the black and get up close to the yellow. To be a little bit careful with the brown off its spot, but still has a big margin for error. And the brown is probably more of an issue in this shot. Probably too risky to try and play the green into the green pocket. He's having a look there. It looks fine margin. Depends on the angle he has. Ideally, if he could try and put the yellow and put the green in the same. Say that well again. The tracer right hand side just to get away from the brown. I think these are very well. Green, brown, and blue needed for a three nil lead. But this frame was different because in this frame, O'Sullivan, he got in the first shot with a brilliant pot. The reds were open about a minute later and the frame was at his mercy and it went wrong. He ended up not landing great on a red, missed it to the yellow pocket. The Irish in a session is in the pink because he leads here 3-0 and he's just two away from reaching the semi-finals of the Wuhan Open. 3 nil down to Liu Haishan. As I was saying in the last frame, he has been whitewashed twice in quarterfinals in the last year. Ding Junhui at the UK Championship, Tianpeng Fei at the Welsh Open, and of course at the Crucible, the World Championship, he lost all seven frames of the last session to Luca Brussel. He's not lost this match yet, but he had a great chance in that last frame, broke down on 52, Liu Haishan cleared up with 76. Ronnie catching the yellow there. He has left a red to the right corner. Again, Lou just having looked at in pottiness. Where exactly he wants to be on the black. One. Again, another sign of his growing confidence. Difficult pot and was made more difficult by the fact that if he missed it, he was guaranteed to leave Ronnie in.
when you're playing the top players, you have two challenges. Firstly, can you play well enough to put yourself in position to win? And then secondly, do you have the belief and the mental strength to go on and get the win? Yeah, I think it, it varies from player to player. You look at someone like Alexander Ursenbacker, who is, I think, a terrific player, but hasn't had that much sort of success really on tour. He's beaten O'Sullivan three times. It doesn't seem to bother him if he's in a winning position against him, whereas we've seen some players have won who have struggled to go over the line against him. So we'll find out maybe in the next hour or so session comes into. It's a throwback to Mark Johnston-Allen. Always beating Stephen Hendry. I think the tantalising thing about snooker is it's in your hands, isn't it? And he's played a nice shot there. It wasn't ideal on that red. That's why defeats can be tough to take because you, you look back at the chances you've had but in this match he's taken his chances so far and if he can take one here then my word he's a big favourite He was a little bit anxious there. Thought he'd under hit it and was going to be blocked behind the red that he's beside. Fifteen. Ideally, you'd, you want to be three nil up. Certainly measured without being slow. Yeah, as you said, Fugle, there's, there's a nice way about him around the table, the way he sort of just strokes these balls into the pockets. He doesn't sort of show emotion. He just keeps himself level-headed, outwardly anyway. How he's feeling inside, we can only speculate. But this is what he was hoping for when he went to sleep last night. This position to be in with a chance to lead 4-0. Helps with if you are under a little bit of pressure or getting maybe getting a little bit excited, if you can keep good close control of the cue ball, and it feels like every pot you play is a simple pot, just reduces the stress and the anxiety. Thirty-nine. And certainly three more reds out in the open. Again, if it goes 4 0, even as good as Ronnie is, or even with a good attitude, you just feel he will then just run out of time. Yeah, I mean, it, it's at 4 0, Lou Hyshen will have a chance to win it at some point. Whether he'll take it or not, we don't know, but he will get the chance. Whereas O'Sullivan, he's sort of going to be hanging on, obviously. Anyway, he's got to get to 4 0 first. He will need one of those reds in the bunch of six. Can they just come across to see at the angle? It's possible if he was low on the black, he could play a cannon to the red to the left of the pack and you'd be on the other one to the other corner. 53. Yeah, under hit it there. He's getting the white clean. Must have thought he got a kick. Because ideally, if, if he could disturb one more red that he needs away from the pack and keep the pack intact. That gives him some extra insurance. He doesn't have that angle. He'll have to settle for playing for the loose red. 
and then come back down towards the black and go again. And this black will put him 60 ahead. the well bottom left hand side to come off the cushion come out and widen the angle he's just looking there where that's going to be the blue or maybe even one of the ball colors to disturb them looks like blue would be the easiest One's a very small show of emotion there. Just to let you know, you have the script of uh, Joe Trump interview uh, available for the midsection in Cyberbox. Uh, I have script in the Cyberbox. And if he's a little bit high on the blue, it would have been perfect just to put the blue and disturb those. Now looking at a plant, a possible plant, if he just screws back to more or less where he is. That's certainly be a bonus if you can play it. 66. He's only just spotted that as a byproduct of not being perfect on the blue. So, come on, Ronnie. They start to shout. Frame not done yet. 66 to lead, 75 on. It would have been had that gone in. He was on a colour. looking ahead the yellow is in a difficult spot that could be a very important ball in terms of making the clearance Six. he's just come across there to have a look that can he leave a white in a certain position and then in potting the pink into the middle he then be naturally disturbing that cluster of four Amazing. He's left frame ball unmissable. It's not happened, has it, for Ronnie O'Sullivan in this match? Is he running out of road in this Wuhan Open? This simple red for 4 0. So Lu Hai Shan, the world number 46, has emerged from the pack this week and is now poised to spring a big upset. But he's played well. He didn't kill the frame off in one visit, but overall he's played well. He's won two pink ball frames. He made the really good clearance, the 76 in frame three. And he is sitting pretty at the interval. And O'Sullivan really does have it all to do. Nine. So far, the way he's played is the concern. He just has not looked anywhere near his best. The only thing predictable about snooker the last few years is that it's unpredictable. You're never quite sure who's going to pop up week to week. Maybe this week it's Lou Heishen. Because at the interval here in this quarter final, he's going to be leading 4 0 unless O'Sullivan can turn this round. But he's 72 behind with 51 on. So he needs six snookers. Yeah, 
presume he's just trying to pot a few balls and get a little bit of a rhythm. Eight. Nine. Rather than go on the practice table for a few shots, might as well get them here. Yeah, exactly. You can't win the frame from here, but he's uh, been a bit stop-start. He did have that 52 in frame three, but that went wrong when he missed. Still a good a good sign for Ronnie. Shows his attitude and application is there. Still trying to do the right thing. We've seen numerous times over the years when maybe he's only needed one snooker, hasn't bothered. So this is a good sign that if he gets his chances, that he remains in the right mental state to be able to take them. So if he can get a couple of frames early on, put Lou under pressure. But as you said, Dave, you feel that during the five frames, potentially, he will at least get one or maybe more good chance to win. Yeah, it's easy to say. It's not so easy to do, but if he can come out, win a couple with big breaks, change the energy in the room, get the crowd on his side, get Lou Eichen under pressure, then the comeback could happen. But that's all ifs and buts. It's up to him to try and make it happen. At least here, he's come to the table, just potted a few, just to get a bit of rhythm. But... It doesn't matter who you are, it's a long way back from 4 0 in a best of nine. Credit to Lou Heishen, though, the way he's played here. He's looked uh, very good. And he needs one more frame to reach the semi finals of this new Wuhan Open. Well, we're here again. That happened the other day to Pang Zhongzhu. Same thing, angled in that pocket. <laughs> yeah, some sort of spell he's got over that pocket. That cue ball looked like it would drop. Yeah, important as well with the red being so close to the left corner pocket. As we said before, the interval, Lou looking for a good chance. And it's always going to be easier to take that chance if the scoreboard is still 4-0 rather than 4-2 or 4-3. It turns out to be very fortunate for Ronnie there. As it turns out, quite a misjudgment there from Lou, a big target to roll into the pack. And the very thing he didn't want was Ronnie getting a, a good chance early on. It's amazing, though, that that's happened twice now. The same thing, angled in that pocket. Well, we said in frame three, in a similar position, he just fancied him to win the frame. He's got to try and do that now. And, and as you say, win a frame handsomely and just pile the pressure on. That's all you can try and do from 4-0 down, is show your opponent that you're up to the challenge of turning it round. Eight. Nine. Obviously, five frames potentially to be played, but again, for Lou, there's not a guarantee he'll get a chance in each of those five frames. Well, he's played on the red to right corner. He's not on it. He has got one to the middle, but it's a bit of a concern. We're saying about, you know, he's used to the conditions, but he seems to be losing, you know, ideal position a little, quite a lot, actually, for him. 17. He's been on this table all week, pretty much, apart from the first match. Lou Heishan coming in for the first time. Riley Carter in the background, just uh, keeping an eye on proceedings. He's 2-1 uh, up, of course, against Mark Allen. Ronnie obviously needs a frame on the board any way possible, but ideally, if you can do it in one visit, so it conserves his energy for a comeback. And also, you're starving your opponent of an opportunity. for Lou in the chair now, even though he is 4-0, probably 4-1 ahead. But he remains calm. 
positive. Keep his belief. Be patient, just believe when he gets his chance, he will take it. Well, he's done nothing wrong, has he? I mean, he could have had a go at that long red, but he was angled. So, I mean, it's just bad luck, really. But we do know that intervals, if they're going to help anyone, it'll be the player trailing. That, the whole history of snooker will tell you that. Again, he's not been in total control here, but he's still going and not too far away now from accounting for the frame. Oh, that red only just wriggled in there, didn't it? So used to seeing him pinpoint and perfect, but at the moment he's sort of struggling to to get anywhere near that. But he does now just need this red for 4-1. He had a bit of luck, let's be honest, angling Lou Harsh in the way he did. Again, just off the jaw that red, but it went in. It looks like 4-1. Well, the crowd, I'm sure, would like to see some sort of comeback. Even those supporting Lou Heish and they want to get the money's worth. The Ronnie O'Sullivan fans, it goes without saying, we want to see it. And this, you feel, is how it's got to happen. He's got to be taking out frames in one visit. So a couple of minor stumbling blocks have been surmounted. He's looking for his fifth century of the week. The real question in this match is what happens when Lou Heishan does get a chance. He hasn't had one in this frame. As Roddy O'Sullivan steps in with a century, a very important break for him just to get a bit of rhythm going in this match tonight. And of course, more importantly, to extend the match into at least another frame. Misses that one, so 101 from Ronnie O'Sullivan. It started with a bit of fortune where he left that cue ball in the jaws of the yellow pocket, angled. Lou Hyacin had no real chance. Underway in frame six for possible nine. It was 4-0 to Lou and Ronnie O'Sullivan made 101 in the last frame. A bit concerned, though, after that break-off shot. The danger at this stage, obviously, when you're trailing like this, you're potentially just one mistake away from losing the match. He's not taking the one on the left. He's looking at the one on the right here. Had no looking in the last frame. Yeah, poor break-off from Ronnie there. Left him a choice of two reds, and he'd be relieved that he didn't pot that red. One. Phenomenal pot. Again, played in such a way that if he hadn't missed it, he was going to leave a red. Just 
just thinking back to last weekend, Judd Trump was 5-2 down to John Higgins in their semi-final at the English Open, and he came out. The next frame was close, but then after that, it was just a blitz of, of breaks. It can happen, regardless of the position in the match. But it's not happened here in this frame. Yeah, I'm sure he's fearing the worst when Ronnie put that brilliant red and had the angle on the black. Probably could have got a nicer split, Ronnie, but he's seen the signs that Ronnie's attitude is good. Still playing very well. It's a little bit of pressure already on this red. Well, he's middled it again, middle of the pocket. So this is the first time he's been in with a chance to go on and win the match. Obviously, a lot of work to do, but he's finally got himself in. From what we've seen before the interval, he would be very much a worthy winner. He's, I thought the, the clearance he made in frame three was the, the key moment. 52 down. Could he take it? Yes, was the answer. 76 he made, including a couple of, you know, key shots to negotiation being one of them. Seven. And they gave a great platform for the fourth frame when he put a great long red. See, would love to win in one visit, but even if he can't, wants to still want to play positive. If he is feeling nervous or anxious, can't show that. Doesn't want to show any weakness to Ronnie. He'll be aware of that. We've seen plenty of times when players have had Ronnie on the ropes, a shot or two away from winning and missed. They're literally like a flick of a switch. He's changed, become a totally different player, a different animal. But again, lose at the table. The win and the losing of this frame, i.e. the match, is in his hands. And that's got to what he, he's got to focus on. As good as Ronnie is, he can't do anything sitting down. I think he was looking for a better angle on the black, but a little bit straighter. So again, play over for the red on the right-hand side, but ideally, at some point, he's going to need that angle on the black to disturb them. And hit that harder than he wanted, had intended to be on the red, close to the right corner. This red's a little bit more difficult, particularly if he's bridging over the red. Yes, I mean, it's easy to say, but the, the, where he left himself, he intended to play the red on the right-hand side. Was it a bit of adrenaline, a bit of excitement, maybe? <laughs> Whatever it was, it's got O'Sullivan back in. It wasn't necessarily the miss on the red. The red was missable, but from where he was in the black, and even from where he was in the red before the black, he shouldn't have just potted eight more points. And again, that kind of shot or mistake he hadn't made before the interval. I said, nobody's more aware of that than Ronnie. And as I said before, regardless of the amount of frames they can play, there's no guarantee in every frame they play, Lou will get a chance. The balls are beautifully placed here for Ronnie. Fully expecting to win the frame from here. And all of a sudden, if Lou does get a chance, that chance at 4-2 up, it's not quite as appealing as it was a 4-0. Ronnie's starting to come in his rear view mirror. 
Captain. Yeah, I mean, at 4 2, it's a, ch a chance of frame. He's got three more chances potentially. It doesn't sound very many, does it, suddenly? And when you get your first. There's a bit of pressure. He didn't look that comfortable on his last visit, it's got to be said. And he has done. This is the test of this sport. It's about handling whatever position you're in. Obviously, you want to be in front quite clearly, but then it's about that last frame. The great Clive Everton described it as clincher's disease. Yeah, he's put himself in position to win. But now it's getting over the line. It's un totally understandable. He's going to be a little bit nervous. It's a massive win from not just to beat Ronnie, but also to be into the semi-finals in his home country. Well, he's going to get another opportunity. Yeah, it's got to be said, O'Sullivan has struggled. That was a shocking miss, really, for him. It came out of the blue, though. You fancied after the century in the last frame that he could win it there. So 30 each. Opportunity knocks here, doesn't it, for Lou Hyshen? One. But there's still pressure on. It's about how he handles it in the next five minutes or so that will tell us whether he can win this match here or whether he'll have to wait for at least one more frame. Yeah, it was probably a better shot than it looked there. That one, the rest could have easily missed it. Again, definitely another opportunity. Got to be a little bit careful with this red. Nine. Yeah, played it well. And again, particularly if he's under pressure, he just wants to have the white ball under control and ideally just leave himself a series of simple pots. It looks fairly calm, but he will be feeling it. 16. It's a big deal having this opportunity to beat Ronnie. Yeah, particularly back now we're back in China as well. He's on home soil. An opportunity to get within a match of a, another big final. 17. He just went there to have a look that if he stuns up past the reds, where can he leave himself to put the red that's on the left of the three, which would free up the other two? Anxious look. Yeah, I think by his reaction, I think he's went too far. Obviously, have to be a little bit precise, but he's desperate to try and pot it. Is there any way he can do it? Manufacture a pot just to keep it going. He knows this was such a good chance. The problem is, if he takes this on and doesn't get it, he's surely leaving the frame on. He's trying to convince himself, as you say, that he can still pot it, but he maybe now he's looking at yeah the the safety instead. Maybe a shot to nothing here. The red just below the pink. Cue ball back to bulk. A comfortable one in the end. 5-1. OK, the last frame took a bit of winning. But he has won it. And Lou Hyashan will play either Ali Carter or Mark Allen 
in the semi-finals of the Wuhan Open. Ronnie O'Sullivan will have to wait to see whether his number one position is taken by Mark Allen this weekend or not. He has been defeated in the quarter-final, still hasn't reached a semi-final in a ranking event since the 2022 World Championship, where he won his seventh Crucible title. Lu Shan into a fifth ranking event 